Okay, so when we were studying Hamid polynomials, Lagrange polynomials, Laguerre polynomials, we saw that the idea of uh, the generating function it's quite useful, and so it turns out that Bessel functions of integral order also have there is a it's possible to write down a generating function, uh, you know, as, as a series expansion, and in fact there is also a closed form uh, expression available, right? So which we will show in this lecture and also show an example of how this can be a, can be used to extract some properties of Bessel functions. Okay, so what do we do when we want to come up with the generating function? We create this series in terms of this you know, variable t, in the, what we are calling it t here. It is really a, you know, a dummy variable in some sense. It gets summed from minus infinity to plus infinity. All the coefficients of this series expansion are really the polynomials or you know the functions of your of interest in this case it's these are not polynomials these are you know each of these functions jn of x m them, themselves are defined in terms of an infinite series but i mean so if you tag them along although jn of x in general itself you know does not have this sort of closed form exp, uh, expression available it turns out quite remarkably that in fact you can you can find a closed form expression for this uh, series and that turns out to be just simply given by this expression e to the x by 2 times t minus 1 by t right so this is the generating function for for the bessel function of integral order now uh, to see this right i'll sort of sketch the argument i mean the detail all the details are not going to be included uh, so the idea is simply to expand right so you have an exponential of some stuff so it is easy to go ahead and expand this. So we have this expansion r going from 0 to infinity you know whatever stuff you are taking the exponential of you are going to take the power with, you know of r and divide by r factorial x by 2 the whole power r times t minus 1 by t the whole power r the whole thing must be divided by r factorial and r will go from 0 to infinity. So this is the uh, expansion of just the exponential function. Now we also have this stuff involving t minus 1 by t the whole power r that itself can be expanded using the binomial expansion. So we have g of x comma t is equal to summation over r to going from 0 to infinity x by 2 the whole power r we leave all this stuff as it is and then you know this 1 by r factorial we write down immediately after this and in place of this t minus 1 over t the whole power r we have this expansion with p going from 0 to r r factorial divided by p factorial times r minus p the whole factorial. So the first is, uh, term here is t, so t to the r minus p and then we have minus 1 by t the whole power p, right. So these are like the two terms in your binomial expansion and now it is a matter of some bookkeeping, right. So the idea is, okay, let us first rewrite this as you know summation over r going from 0 to infinity is as it is x by 2 the whole power r as it is r factorial cancels then summation over p going from 0 to r minus 1 to the p divided by so this minus 1 to the p divided by p factorial r minus p the whole uh, p factorial times so this t to the r minus p minus p it will become just t to the r minus 2p so now we see that we have an expansion in terms of you know in powers of t Right. So, you can see that you know r minus 2p can take both positive values and negative values. So, you can think of this expansion as really an expansion in powers of t where uh, you know you can think of some coefficient uh, you know times t to the n and n going from all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, so what needs to be done is to extract the coefficient of t to the n where n can be positive or you know 0 or positive and n can be negative. So these are two separate cases one has to treat these two cases separately in order to you know do it carefully. If you do it then in fact we can show that the coefficient corresponding to t to the n is nothing but jn of x. This will come out from the series expansion definition of the Bessel function itself, right. So we have to assume that you know this swapping of these summations involved and all of this is, is legitimate. So it is by no means uh, a rigorous proof the way we are doing it but basically um, 
you know, it's a plausible argument, let's say. And, and it, indeed it is true. So you can uh, just, you have sort of an argument for why this works out and then you can play with, you know, the generating function. So obtain to derive many properties of Bessel functions, which are indeed true and which we have already obtained using other methods. So now let me quickly sketch the argument for when t to the n, when we are doing this bookkeeping exercise for t to the n where n is greater than or equal to 0 and then I will allow you to fill in the details for n is n being negative. So the idea is, you know, so if r minus 2p is equal to n where n is positive, then we immediately see that the coefficient corresponding to t to the n can be written in terms of you know, we make the substitution r minus 2p equal to n. So, r minus uh, p is going to become n plus p. So, in place of r minus p, you get an n plus p. In place of you know, p remains as it is, minus 1 to the power p remains as it is. And then, of course, p will now go all the way from 0 to infinity, right? So, I mean, you are assuming r itself to take all values from 0 to infinity. So, it is it's a bookkeeping exercise. So then r x by 2, the whole power r is n plus 2p. So but this expansion is actually nothing but the expansion corresponding to Bessel function of order n. So this is immediately identified to be j n of x, right. So when n is negative, it is, we have to be a little more careful, but it's, it's just a matter of spending maybe 5 or 10 minutes and convincing yourself that indeed this works out, right. So there if, if n is negative, then uh, so in place of, uh, so once again you will put r minus 2p is equal to n where n is negative. So then we see that this denominator r minus p um, uh, itself cannot become negative because if it does then you will have 1 over, uh, so the factorial of a negative number will give you infinity and therefore you will have to stop r minus p from becoming negative and then you in fact your summation will will not start from p equal to 0 but it will start from actually p equal to mod n right. So uh, you know r minus 2p is equal to n so r minus p is equal to p plus n. Right. So, if r minus p must be greater than or equal to 0, so then you will see that um, uh, n plus uh, n plus p, um, so, r, so r minus p must be greater than or equal to 0, so that is uh, n plus p must be greater than or equal to 0. So then, so you will get constraints on, uh, on the, the lower end of p which will turn out to be mod n. And then there is a way to argue that in fact you can extend, you can add a bunch of zeros, it's like a padding that you can do and then you can carefully, you know, show that indeed j, uh, you know, these powers will turn out to be these Bessel functions or with, with negative integer order. So we will not, I will not go into all those details. So let's say that this is indeed true, it seems plausible, it definitely seems to work out for positive n and it also works out for negative n. So let us quickly see an example of how to use this to derive a result which we have already derived using the series expansion. So let us start with this expansion. Assume that this is indeed the generating function. So g of x comma t is equal to e to the x by 2 times t minus 1 over t is equal to summation n going from minus infinity to plus infinity t to the n j n of x. And if you take a derivative on both sides with respect to x, right. So this is what generating functions can do for us, right. So we, you know, take derivatives with respect to x, sometimes it is convenient to take derivatives with respect to t and then, you know, there is this uh, assumption of uniform convergence which is true for Bessel functions and so on and you can do term by term uh, differentiation. So therefore here you see that in place of on the right hand side you have a summation over n t to the n j n prime of x and on the left hand side you have half times t minus 1 by t times e to the x by 2 times t minus 1 by t. But e to the x by 2 
times t minus 1 by t is nothing but this generating function itself which has this expansion. So, we might as well rewrite the left hand side as half times t minus 1 by t times the same Bessel function expansion is equal to now this expansion in terms of the derivatives. And now the left hand side is basically made up of two terms. So, this t will, will make it t to the n plus 1 j n of x and there is a half of course and then a minus a half times t to the n minus 1 j n of x and n summation from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, it is just a matter of comparing terms on both sides, you know, comparing the coefficient of t to the n on both sides. If you do that, you know, first of all, we will multiply throughout with 2. So, the right hand side will become 2 times t to the n j n prime of x summation over n and then we have to just do some bookkeeping involving t to the n. So, for the first time corresponding to t to the n n will appear uh, when so uh, when you have j n minus 1 and here you will get j n plus 1 and so immediately we see that actually 2 times j n prime of x which is a, a coefficient of you know t to the n on the right hand side after you have multiplied throughout by 2 and on the left hand side you get j n minus 1 of x minus j n plus 1 of x. So, which is a recurrence relation which we already worked out for you know when for any order new it does not have to be integer right. So, this is an illustration of how the generating function can be used and uh, I mean we have seen other uh, examples involving Hamid polynomials like air polynomials where you know uh, many other uh, results are obtained with great ease and so in that context that this is also it is useful to also uh, obtain the generating function for Bessel function. Okay, that is all for this lecture. Thank you.